we live in a world that's so interesting uh, that it has to be expressed in some fashion. This is my way of expressing myself uh, about a world that is an absolute miracle. The, the number of atoms in your hand is equivalent to, uh, at least to the number of stars you can see in the visible universe. My name is Hayden Butler and uh, one of the things I do is stained glass portraiture in, uh, uh, in Sudbury. I also do geology, I do other kinds of things. I like looking at the stars and everything else and I'm fascinated by everything. In September 1966, I joined um, uh, a subsidiary of, uh, of INCO that was based in Australia and uh, started uh, going around the central desert. I actually mapped uh, uh, 250,000 square kilometres of the Yilgarn Shield, the Ar Archean Shield in, in Western Australia uh, using a helicopter. I've been an exploration geologist, which basically means that I'm exploring continually. And of course, this is an exploration of the inner self learning to do portraiture. Stained glass is what they have done for a thousand years in churches and what they do is they take a sheet of glass and they paint crushed glass of various colours onto the, uh, onto the sheet of glass and put it back in the kiln and melt the crushed glass uh, parts back onto, onto the sheet underneath and that's stained glass by definition. Whereas uh, the glass I'm doing which, which is now called art glass was invented really by the American Louis Comfort Tiffany back in the late 1800s uh, because he wanted to do different things. And uh, so he experimented and he mixed glasses and he got different textures and the rest of it. And these, these are the kinds of glasses that I'm using to create these uh, portraits. And you, you, need the, uh, co you need copper foil around each piece of glass because uh, the metal doesn't uh, stick to glass. Uh, the glass has covalent bonds and the, and the metal has metallic bonds. So the electrons in this, this, this material don't talk to the electrons in that material. This is not something that's new. And people who were working in, uh, in, uh, during the Bronze Age in uh, Babylon would understand exactly what I'm doing. I, I do portraits of the people that I find interesting at the time. In other words, they are something I would want to do because a reasonable portrait, say two, two by four, four feet, takes about 200 hours to, do, uh, to do, the, uh, do the thing, depending on the amount of uh, detail that's within it, because the more, more pieces, the longer it takes, because each piece has to be wrapped, has to be soldered, and so on and so forth. And these are not the kinds of people that people are going to buy, because uh, nobody's interested in who, who wins Nobel Prizes, which is a, really, a real statement about, uh, uh, about the world, but, that's, but not every Nobel Prize winner is, is, is of interest to me. I'm doing those in that section that, that, are, that are interesting because they, they've actually contributed something that nobody almost knows about. For instance, I did Paul Dirac because the character had, uh, had all kinds of flaws, you know, and he was a very interesting person. Basically what I'm uh, doing is finding the facets on the face. The face itself consists of uh, uh, various brightnesses, and you can think of this as grey shades. These grey shades are um, uh, in art are called values. The values are the most important part of the colour the color field in a, in, a, in a picture because then you can see the contrast, so you can see the objects look like the real object itself. Well, you need, you need the colours, but, uh, the, um, but then you have to know what, uh, what colour theory. A lot of uh, uh, modern artists who do portraiture do the same kind of thing as me in paint. They use blocks of paint in the same sense. And uh, then you have to understand how this transmits because uh, the, um, with, a, with a painting, you put it on the wall and you light it up and it essentially stays the same. You, can, you wander around it and, uh, and uh, look at it. But with the glass, there's light is coming through from outside and, uh, uh, the, uh, and, the, and the light outside changes throughout the day. So you have to make something so that it looks interesting continually throughout the day, whether it's cloudy, whether it's sunny, whether it's passing trucks or whatever. It has to fit. And uh, if, you, um, if you use clear glasses, you can, see the, you can see the outside coming through and you can actually use that to effect. So for instance, if you want to do a clear stained glass uh, with uh, clear textures, you might decide that uh, the, to get the darkest colours would be the tree outside in the, uh, of the house. So you just put clear glass in there and that, then the tree will, will be seen through the clear glass and but it will look dark because that's the colour of the tree. So you end up learning all these, all these rules uh, by doing. How I select those uh, portraits depends entirely on the circumstances of the time. 
the Crimea was invaded by, by Russia. So I did a portrait of, um, of uh, Yadislav Richter. Yadislav Richter was one of the most remarkable uh, piano players of the 20th century. He had his repertoire of classical music uh, that, he, that he could just play uh, without, uh, without uh, doing anything was remarkable. So I thought to myself, how am I going to portray what's about to happen? Because I knew that it was going to happen. I knew that the invasion of Ukraine was, it was inevitable. I thought, okay, there's going to be three countries involved. There's going to be Russia, there's going to be Ukraine, and there's going to be Be Belarus. I had to decide how I would get, have uh, Yadislav Richter uh, and what, what, what would he be playing. And, uh, and I thought about it and I realized that the most logical uh, thing would be uh, would be uh, Prokofiev's uh, sixth piano sonata because it's a war sonata, and in that uh, in that sonata, the uh, it says um, it says that in some of the six sections use the fist to hit the piano, not the fingers, the fist. And I found a picture of Yaroslav Richter playing the playing the sixth uh, 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 sonata of uh, piano sonata of uh, Prokofiev, literally doing it. You know, war, and it's called a war sonata and there's the three countries involved. So um, the unconscious mind, you know, the, the, the base of, a, of, of your mind is, is where, where all the work happens and that's when it pops up and bubbles up from there. Because all this stuff's going on in the background, you might watch the news, you might watch something else and something pops into, the, into your head for, for no apparent reason, but it, it, but it makes sense to you at the time. But often I go with that. Or I might think I'm going to do something and then I might even draw it up and realize it's not, not timely to do that and I just, just abandon it. Subject matter that I do is, has nothing to do with what people want, but it has something, it's what I, I like to do. I mean, this is the whole point about uh, these things. I mean, why would I do the Mona Lisa? It's already been done. Art is a private expression of, uh, what, what, of the soul of the, of the artist. You're seeing their psychology, all, of, all that's going on inside them, their skill, their, everything else. So why would, you want to, why would you want to copy it? What I'm doing is not necessarily, con in some circles, considered to be art at all. Um, it, the, the, um, to, to, to be art, it has to have a monetary value in this, in this particular society. In this society right now, everything is based on, on its monetary value. That, that they've forgotten uh, the, the inner, inner, inner person. And the people who are trying to talk about uh, um, uh, the, the inner life of, of individuals are either, either, either ignored or they're, they're crazy, you know, or considered crazy. I don't think like that, basically. There's something that, that I like to do uh, because it's a challenge and I have to express uh, uh, what's going on in my head at the time. If you're comfortable by letting the unconscious mind or whatever you, want, whatever you like to call it, the bottom, bottom of your mind uh, run the procedure through, that is what you get and it should be a surprise to, even to the person who uh, creates it. And as soon as you turn it into work you've just taken away the enjoyment of doing it. So you, you do it and you don't really care about the about the other things because it's satisfying. It's satisfac satisfactory to the artist, and uh, and uh, if you can make a li living out of it, uh, great. Some people I do a portrait of them because of uh, their character. If if you look at the look at the f original Predator movie, I mean, you've got Schwarzenegger. Everyone knows what he's done. But there's a guy by the name of Bill Duke, and Bill Duke is just one of the characters within the movie. And I thought, and then I started reading about what he'd done, what he'd done for his community and the rest of it. And I thought, here's a guy that is, uh, is an actor. He's doing, doing stuff in the background for his community and the rest of it. Nobody's, nobody knows about it except locally. And I said, here's a, here's a person of worth. So I did his portrait. There's a line in, uh, in Predator that he, that he actually utters. And he says, I see you, as he's looking towards the alien, whatever. Look, the portrait, he's looking out at the viewer and he, and, and, and he sees you that the portrait sees you and what, you know, this, uh, so it's a, it's a, it's a, me a metaphorical idea. The, the reason I, I did, a, did a portrait of uh, Leonard Nimoy is because he's a cultural icon. Now, because I've done, I, I, every now and again I do a cultural icon because they have meaning to the culture. Uh, and I, and uh, I don't care whether I sell it. Uh, sending, sending a portrait of it to people who are, who are close to him or whatever, to me, doesn't, that doesn't interest me. By putting a monetary value on it, on it and selling it, you've you've just uh, you've you've uh, somehow or other you've uh, you've done something to his iconic status. M my attitude in life is that uh, uh, we're here to help each other. It's really that simple, and uh, so that we can, so we can form a community 
and uh, every, everybody has their part, which is like Shakespearean really, and, and we do. And I always figure there's a reason, r reason for the variety in, in human beings, because they all tell us something about the world. And uh, so uh, Leonard Nimoy uh, is, is an icon because he's tell, he tells a lot of people in, in, while, while playing that character something about themselves. And uh, because if it, if it connects to, if the character connects to the person who's viewing it, it's, it has something to do with them. And that's very interesting. It connects to, through the generations. Oh, uh, Rex Murphy. I did a, a mosaic of Rex Murphy because he amuses me. He, he's, his, uh, his, uh, uh, his language is interesting. It's, uh, it's, it's wonderful to hear how he can, uh, how he can put sentences together. Um, I did a picture of, uh, of Alan Guth fellow who um, came up with the idea of inflation in the early universe, him and another couple of, but him, him in particular. And he was younger then, so I did a picture of him when he was young. And uh, he t started talking about multiverses and the rest of it, so I got a whole bunch of bubbles coming out of his hands, like, you know, he's got the whole multiverse in his hands. So that, and then of course I put words on the path, bang, wall, all up, you know, all the big bangs <laughs> going on in his hands. And um, because it was funny, well, I use symbols uh, uh, in, the, in the pieces to, sit, to show that there's something else going on in the portrait. And uh, people can work out what they m think that might be. The uh, connection, connection between all the things that I do, um, why am I doing uh, sta stained glass and why am I doing stained glass portra portraiture when, I've, when my degree is in geology? Well, geology and the kind of geology that I've done as an explorationist is mapping. And mapping is the patterns of the rocks in the world. And the patterns of the rocks in the world are beautiful, just like trees. They, uh, they have, uh, there's folds, there's faults, there's intrusions, there's all kinds of things, lava flows. These patterns are extraordinary. And, uh, and uh, when you're doing a map, you mark the edge of the, uh, whatever the particular unit is. And it's exactly the same as marking edges in a uh, portrait. So it's not really a big leap to say that uh, they're, they're essentially the same thing. So it's really just extending, uh, ex extending what I've learned in one field into another. It's not about uh, fame. Now, they mean something to me in terms of uh, my own personal psychology, basically. I always figure that if you put all the portraits that I've ever done on the wall, a psychologist would look at this stuff and say, I know what he's all about.